half in the bag. I don't even know what's wrong with my face. It's here! The movie Jay has literally been waiting years to see. It's Zach Baggins' Demon House! A documentary about a house possessed by a hundred demons, which is the least scariest thing in Gary, Indiana. Our floor is not a garbage. The table is. Oh, I'm sorry. Jay, what did you think of the Demon House? <laughs> Well, better question is, Mike, why did we watch Demon House? Well, you were a fan of documentaries. <laughs> I am. What does that have to do with this fictional film? Jay. <laughs> now, I know I get, I know I get, um, I know I get, I get, I get made fun of a lot. Because you believe in ghosts. Well, here's the thing. Let me, let me just clear the air. I am a, a rational skeptic. Uh, I am not a, a person who blindly believes in ghosts or the paranormal. I find it all fascinating. Sure. And I find, I, I think the show Ghost Adventures, which I've been watching for a long time, ever since their original documentary. Oh my God, you own it. How embarrassing. From 2006. This is currently going for 50 bucks on Amazon. Oh, it's out of print. Released by the esteemed Echo Bridge Entertainment. <laughs> In their very first documentary, they go to they, they go to a place in, in, in Nevada, the Goldfield Hotel, um, and they capture a full body apparition. Um, and then the big thing at the end is they're walking around kind of this like rundown basement, and uh, the, uh, they they see a brick fly. Is that you making all the noise? Holy shit! And then they bring in a video analyst, and he's like, "You don't see a string. I'm I'm looking at all the video." imagery and pixels and stuff and I don't see a string. I'm gonna bring up some graphics right here in a second that's gonna show you of a straight line on which if the brick was launched or pulled in any way that it would have gone in a straight line and you'll be able to see that underneath the line you'll be able to see the brick come right here underneath the line there it kind of dipped down underneath of it right there here's another view of it dipped down and kind of went in an arch there so in my opinion that it doesn't look like it's been uh, tampered with it looks like that uh, some something uh, through this brick. Well, if these guys I've never heard of in my life say it's real, then it must be real, right? On the fourth floor, just as we passed an open stairwell, something rushed at us. We got movement. We could hear steps and clanging coming right for us. Uh, another interesting thing is the documentary ends with an epilogue uh, about a year later where a news crew from Nevada goes to the Goldfield Hotel. Could you always tell me in the recorder if you did it? It was a thank you, but we've done. Did anybody say that? Nobody said that. No. no. Did the news fake it? I don't know. But they captured some pretty amazing evidence in their very first documentary. Thus began the Travel Channel show called Ghost Adventures. Which um, is what, four or five seasons? 18. Like no way. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's not been 18 seasons of this stupid show. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. Yes, well, they're not like, it hasn't been on for 18 years. I believe that even less than I believe in ghosts. It hasn't been on for 18 <laughs> years, but there are 18 seasons. Oh my God. I mean, they're like 10, 12 episodes. And so Ghost Adventures has, has sort of become a guilty pleasure of mine, where I watch it and Zach Baggins, he's a fascinating media personality to me. The three of us will travel to some of the most highly active paranormal locations where we will spend an entire night being locked down from dusk until dawn. You have reached your final destination, hell. He's, he's part genuine, but also part part charlatan. That, that's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, I have not watched hardly any ghost adventures, just a few clips here and there. Uh, and you talk about this first documentary where they, they capture all this amazing stuff, you see an actual apparition, and you compare that to this new film, Demon House, where they don't capture anything, and it's like the most boring documentary, documentary ever about the paranormal. But he has that quality where I think he is partially genuine about uh, his love for the paranormal or interest in the paranormal, but he also comes across like, a, like an actual real-world hack fraud. Um, he has the famous uh, Zach Baggins Haunted Museum in Las Vegas, 
and uh, which is interesting for some of the actual like real tangible things that are there. You have like the the, the cauldron that Ed Gein like boiled people in and like Jack Kevorkian's van and things like that I find interesting. But then like to get into the museum, he has like a like a Zoltar machine of himself. And he's like, you will see some wonders and scary things inside my haunted museum. And then later they mentioned that he's uh, uh, one of his big inspirations was P.T. Barnum. It's like, well, that makes perfect sense. They're both hucksters. This way to the egress. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and if you've ever seen, I think he wrote a book. Oh, no. And if you've ever seen the cover of the book, uh, it's, it's straight out of satire. I can't take him, like his voice, I just cannot take him seriously. Is this the axe that you used to kill eight people? Just then, my digital recorder captured an EVP that sounds like an evil spirit laughing at my questions. Yeah. Him trying to talk, like, seriously about these things, he just comes across comical all the time. It'd be like if I tried to narrate something seriously with, like, my, my nasally Steve Buscemi voice. Like, no one's gonna take that serious. There, there is a quality to his voice mm -hmm. that, that is, is slightly humorous. You wanna keep killing? Push this axe on my face! We, we of course, should quickly reference that Zach Baggins did not invent the ghost hunting television phenomenon. Oh, it, no. It's been, uh, I think, the ghost hunters. And then there is a, I think there's a ghost hunters international. Well, and don't but, forget there was the, the original Ghostbusters TV show with the monkey. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. The topic is, is very expansive about details. Like there's poltergeist activity, things moving. There's EVPs, as we mentioned. They bring in more complex ghost hunting equipment in the later seasons, which to me starts bordering on the kind of territory because early on, um, and we're gonna talk about the movie soon. We, we just- <laughs> this, the, Context. This is, this is my other Star Trek. <laughs> this, this is my interest. Um, and y'all can make fun of me all you want, but-, but <laughs> <laughs> look, look up the phrase guilty pleasure in a dictionary, okay? Because early on in the show... What's a dictionary? It's a website. Early seasons of the show, they'd show up, they'd do a lockdown. That means we're locked into our location. And they would lock themselves down, which I guess meant no producers or production assistants could interfere. There's no one pulling invisible string. Right, yeah. so they would lock down and they'd have X cameras, they'd set up cameras around, and they'd walk around with night vision stuff and they'd have digital recorders. And so basically at the end of the show, you'd get, you'd get a ton of EVPs. And it's real, some of the stuff, it's like, okay, if they faked it, they, like, I, I don't give the creativity of people that work on a Travel Channel show that much credit. Hmm. How subtle some of the stuff is, where it's like, okay, they peek around a corner, and as they're peeking around the corner, you see like this black mass, and then it kind of moves away to where it's not a shadow, but it kind of looks like it's intelligently moving away. Mm. And it's like, what was that? And then he tries to recreate it, and it's not there. And it's like, what, what, you know, it's very subtle, and it's on this grainy video, which is hard to reproduce. And those are the good seasons, the early part. Later on, then they bring in uh, something called a spirit box. Oh, yeah. Which is a, a device that cycles through radio frequencies at a rapid pace. It can sit there for an hour and you not hear anything. And then a voice will come through. And you know, like, where did that come from? And so that's when I start getting like, eh, eh. And then the really bad stuff is um, they have a, a, a thing where it's like, it's like they enter, they type in a text and then a ghost text messages them back. <laughs> and they're like, 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 all I picture is some like, like production assistant, like typing in a text message and sending it to the device. Sure, that playing yeah. With. Um, and. Zach Baggins here? No, What's Zach is not here, but um, <laughs> I think I mentioned Ghost Adventures years and years and years ago on our program. Okay on one of our programs, probably this one. Okay. And we received an anonymous email from someone who claimed to have worked on the show. Who, oh. said, who said that routinely um, production assistants would, would make noises 
or throw things. They were told to do stuff like this. This is a shocking revelation to me. Um, I'm Zach Bagans. I'm one of the world's leading researchers on ghosts and demonology. It's a very, very quiet movie. Um, very kind of dry. The first half's very dry. Very dry, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to give me your documentary reactionary perspective. Well, like I said, like I didn't even really view this as a documentary. I mean, there's, I don't give a crap about paranormal stuff for the most part. Uh, well, you're in, a big in, fan of the Exorcist movies. Well, that's that's what I'm going to say is like, like I don't care about supposedly real world paranormal stuff unless the specifics are legitimately interesting. Like the famous Amityville horror, you know, the, the I don't think this is in the original movie, but I know it's from the, the book. And of course, this has all been debunked. But the idea of like the little girl is like talking to like a giant pig monster, like that's in the book and things like that, that are like, oh, that's kind of creepy and interesting. Uh, and this movie is pretty dull when it comes to the specifics or the interesting stuff related to the, the paranormal aspects to it. Like, I don't know, some little kids swear and get mad in the house <laughs> well <laughs> like there's just not a whole lot to it to the point where like of all the things that zach baggins has investigated like this is the feature like i don't know i bet there's probably been more like the the, the velasca x murder house like that's interesting to me and this is just like oh this slummy house has demons in it yeah it's like, eh. that, that was a little lacking was kind of the backstory of the house he he referenced the fact that four or five people died in it, like the brother of someone died. It seemed to me like there was a lot of information that was being held back on this documentary, especially the part um, when he's talking about Hollywood wanting the rights, oh, Hollywood sure. owning the rights basically to this story. Yeah. And the and, family. An unnamed Hollywood producer is, is uh, badgering Zach Baggins about him making this documentary. Yes, a, a name he, he blurs out and disguises the voice on the phone, <laughs> Jason Blum. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, basically he's like, you have the rights to the documentary, not the film, motherfucker. Yeah. And Zach Bangs is like, don't you threaten me, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna come at you. <laughs> um, and it's like, so uh, then the family that was in the house doesn't want to talk to Zach because they don't, they, they, they want to hold out for money. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's, the, that's the fucking case with every haunted house, even Amityville. Oh yeah. Where it's like, it's a fake. They're right. faking it. And everyone's that's lived in the house since. Nothing's happened. But, and then it's like, ooh. And, and, and to Zach's credit, he addresses that in a large chunk of this film. Is, is this a hoax? He, he does, but he almost does it in a way to like then later prove that it's real. Where he's like, I'm going to show you all the, the skeptical stuff, but... Oh, yeah. I stayed overnight in the house and I saw a, I saw a shadow. So it's real, bro. I boycotted the Winchester movie with Helen Miram. Sure. Because uh, old lady Winchester, her fa uh, family made the Winchester rifle. A whole bunch of people got shot by Winchester rifles, so she went crazy and thought all the, the ghosts of the people that got killed were coming to get her. Yeah. So she commissioned this mansion to be built and was like, make stairs that go nowhere. Make See, that, that's interesting to me. That's an that interesting story. Yes. Yeah. But if you watch the movie, I'm sure everything explodes. <laughs> And, and that's the stuff that annoys me is when they go based on a true story. And, <laughs> you know, so that's why I, I, I like the Demon House documentary because it was so subtle and they didn't really go over the top. And maybe, and, and like when I watch it, like I think I've said this before, I wanna watch a movie where the scariest thing that happens is a chair moves. Sure. Because that to me is closer to reality of potential real life hauntings. Mm. Like, and, and really the, th what happened at the end of this movie was so subtle, but really creepy yeah. to me. See, and that's like, because to me, I was watching, I wasn't watching this as like a real documentary. I was watching it almost as like a horror movie. And it was so subtle that it was anticlimactic because we have like an hour and a half buildup of them talking about this house and the people that have lived there and all the backstory. And then the big climax of the movie is Zach Baggins saying, I'm going to stay overnight. And then he does. And then... He has his camera on night vision, 
and uh, he gets spooked and he drops it and it goes out of focus conveniently right when a spook goes by. You see like a vague shadow out of focus in the background and that happens right after the camera goes out of well, focus. Well, you do hear, you hear a, a growl noise and you hear footsteps leading up to that. Yes. And which... then he throws something at it and he's like, stay back, stay back. And, right. Um, that's the big cl climactic ending to the film, but, but the bulk of the movie is, is more, less about evidence which was, which was what was a little disappointing to me because really like in the show, this is not, if you really like the Ghost Adventures show, this is very different than the show. And I think the story behind this was they were making this into a show, but just they had just too much stuff. So they decided to make it into a movie. Dan, but, I don't think there was enough stuff to warrant yeah, being a movie. After watching it, I was like, oh my God, all this crazy, crazy shit's gonna happen. They're gonna have so much stuff. But really it was very sparse with, uh, with the, um, the evidence. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised at that. And usually in the show, it's like they go, they go like full on with their investigation. We got, we got Jay Wosley, we got Billy Tolley, we got Aaron Goodwin. Uh, and, and, th and they go, we're all going in. So and Billy's going in the basement. Aaron's going in the attic. Aaron has six different pieces of equipment. We've got 19 cameras going on. And I really thought they were going to give the demon house the full Ghost Adventures treatment <laughs> with every available, even bring in Bill Chappell, and he'll probably get killed. <laughs> He's gonna die of a heart attack. Just bring in, bring in Bill Chappell. His toupee is gonna fly off. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're making yourself laugh because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, <laughs> uh, and and so, uh, but really, it came down to just Zach, and I think that was because. The bulk of the movie was this house can really negatively affect people. Well, it can negatively affect you for watching it. The movie opens with a warning that uh, uh, demons and ghosts and ghouls can uh, get you can get you through electronic devices. So merely watching the movie, you could be inviting a demon into your into your face. I, I, I'm, I've been terrified ever since. I'm, 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 I'm picking up on, on touches of uh, sarcasm in your voice. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's, if that's translatable to, the, to our audience, but um, no. But My sarcasm is going to transmit through electrical devices the, the all over YouTube. The list, of, um, <laughs> the list of, of bad things that happened to all the people associated with the house is pretty impressive. Coincidental, possibly. Sure. But pretty impressive. Well, so, there, was, there was one thing that kind of annoyed me. They were talking about the children that lived in the house and how they got, at one point, all like violently angry and they were like swearing at the parents or the mom, at least. I don't think the dad was in the picture. And they talk about an incident where one of the kids is, they take him to the hospital because he's acting weird. And multiple people mentioned that the kid climbed up the wall, but they never bothered to elaborate on what that means. And I was just thinking about like, like they don't mention the possibility of like mental health problems, like in this, like if that's something that runs in this family or if that's the case with this kid, they don't really mention that at all. And that would like, that was like the first thing I thought of is like, oh, the kid's got issues. Yeah. But they don't really touch on, they just kind of brush over that. Well, yeah, the family seemed to not be in the picture too much. They, they eventually found someone that had lived in the house prior Yeah. and they got involved. And then um, the, the the daughter that was in the house, like a few days later, tried to kill herself. Oh, so yeah. then they take her to the priest at the church and try to exercise the demon. Um, so I, I don't know. I think what I was saying was the point was, was that uh, people that go into this house can be really negatively affected outside of it. Like the cameraman. Yeah. Who, who unfortunately seemed like a sketchy dude to begin with. Yes. <laughs> he wasn't like videographer man. Yeah. Like, I'm videographer, man, and went fucking that shit. He looked like someone you find off of Craigslist. Want cameraman to work for copy and credit. Yeah, yeah. And this, this, this scumbag shows up. Well, he looked like he may have, like, I don't know, been on some kind of drugs. He was friends with Jay Wosley, apparently. Jay, he was referred to them by Jay Wosley, who's the guy with the beard. And, the, and he's into, like, kind of occulty stuff and weird things. I think he has, a like, a pentagram tattoo and... Mm. Um, he's like, into mysticism, and so he probably has some fucking weird friends. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the the fact that this guy seemed like like a methamphetamine addict <laughs> who was flipping out in the hotel didn't add to the credibility. Yeah. Oh yeah, he because they say the house can give you like really strong negative yeah, emotions. Yeah. So then they show him at the hotel later, and he's like storming up and down the hallways, and he's like yelling at the elevator. 
And yeah, it's just like he just seems like a, like he's on drugs. Like, yeah, it's so. it's unfortunate that. Uh, but then then you have that old guy who was the the um, technical expert. Yeah. And then his organs started to fail, and he ended up in the hospital. Yeah. And so, but then it's like. With stuff like that, you're like, uh, this is staged. I don't know. I want evidence. I want to see evidence. And then the, the, they have a weird black shadow that comes oh, yeah. over. That, that was kind of neat. And then the ending was neat. Um, but yeah, lacking on uh, investigational tools. I would have I would have pulled out all the all the guns, all the stops. Pull out pull out all the stops. Bring in every piece of paranormal equipment you have. I wanted the. The spirit box going in that demon house. That demon would have talked to Zach through the fucking spirit box. All he had to do was bring it in the house. No. He didn't bring it. Or even an EVP thing. I think he caught a voice. He heard a voice. Hmm. Um, but where's the spirit box? And where's the SLS camera? And, you know, it, it was very different than the show. And I think fans of the show probably would have wanted the Ghost Adventures full treatment on the demon house before they demolished it. But, yeah. Um, so kind of focus was a little little off. Um, well, and we do have to talk about the most important aspect of the movie, which is uh, Zach Baggins, he stays overnight in the house, locks himself up, boards up all the windows and the doors, so he's just completely alone in the house. And he gets, uh, he gets spooked so hard by these ghosts that they make him uh, blur his vision. And he has to wear glasses for the rest of his life because he got haunted so hard. That's, that would suck. Again, I'm picking up on your sarcasm. <laughs> that... I just think Zach Baggins is so funny. He, 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 uh, uh, he, his eyes started to hurt him, and he has permanent double vision. Yes. So he has to wear prismed glasses. Because he, cause the, the, the demons got to him so hard. <laughs> In my 37 years of police investigation, I've never run into anything like that before. I just got the keys to the demon house. You think it's dangerous for me to be in that house? I wouldn't be there. I, I'm, I, am a, I am a healthy skeptic. Sure. And I, I understand showmanship. I'm, I'm interested in, like, if there's some, like, like the Axe House again. Like, if there's a story behind it. Okay, that's I don't care so much about the paranormal stuff. Like, if you want to say, like, oh, people were murdered here, and now they're haunting it. Like, ah, yeah, the haunting part's fine. I'm interested in the real world parts of it. And I think that's the problem with this documentary, is that the real world parts aren't terribly interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, not a lot of backstory to the house. I wanted to hear, like, in, in 1960-something. Someone got stabbed in the eye here and yeah. died. And then 10 years later, they reported that they saw an apparition of a guy with a stabbed eye. Yeah. I want the, I, yeah, the backstory, why this house? Yeah. You know, he, and then he says some kind of vague, vague reasoning, like demons are attracted to like poverty and misery and murder. And well, stuff that, and that's another and, aspect is the idea that this is, yeah, it's in Gary, Indiana, which is a very, very low income city. And uh, you could say it's a slum. It's a slum. That's and the where people, Michael Jackson's from. He's from Gary. That's true. That's true. But yeah, the, so like all the people he's talking to are, are super low income. And yeah, they even mentioned that they're holding out for money from the, yes. the big Hollywood producers. So it's like, eh, you're making me not want to believe anything you're saying. Yeah. But, but providing that, that um, counterpoint is important in documentaries. Sure. Because documentaries can be very manipulative. There, there's a lot of, lot of ways to do that. So providing counterpoints, providing all the evidence. But if, if Zach, as he does legitimately believe that demons are real, I can't say I blame him for trying to talk too much with a demon. Tell me more, give me more stuff from my... You've killed people? People who leave this place get run down by buses? <laughs> Five minutes, their organs fail after they leave? <laughs> Let me stick this device in your face, demon. Then it's suspect. Yeah. It's suspect after, after he, then he demolishes the house so yeah. that nobody else can go poking around in there. Well, he bought the house. He, he wouldn't even he have to it. demolish it. Yeah, uh, I guess. That's true. But then you could say, Zach, let us in your house. He could true. have sold tours inside the yeah. house. But then people might get killed. She had holes in both her wrists. It was like little cuts. They called 911. They called 911. They did. There was an unidentifiable voice. I only heard it on the recording. Who in there? Something came back. I don't know if it was that demon, but something came. So yeah, Demon House. From watching Ghost Adventures, 
pretty religiously, knowing lots about ghost hunting and, and all the methods and tools used. I expected to see a little more of that. Um, so it seems kind of like half measure, like you want the, the backstory of the house. Yeah. I want more uh, investigational stuff, evidence gathering. And there seemed to be kind of a little bit of both. Mm. Not enough to lean in either direction. Yeah, it didn't feel like it justified being a feature film as opposed to an episode of the Ghost Adventure show. Uh, maybe the first like third of it was a little dry, but then it, it started to ramp up, become more compelling. The, the kind of the mounting stuff of what was happening to people. Um, and then some of the evidence that happened in, in, the, in the film was good um, to where it satisfied me in, in the regard of I, I'm tired of movies like Winchester House where it's just explosions. And, right. they, and they say it's based on, I, I like real stuff and, and, I, and I'm glad they didn't go over the top with, with the, the, the crazy. With the ghost hunting stuff, it's like you you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Yeah. You, you get something that's too good, everyone goes fake. <laughs> you get something that's that's too like, mm, then people go, that's just the noise. Yeah, you know. So you, you got to find that middle ground of, <laughs> of evidence that's just compelling enough. And I think that's kind of the 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 warm area where this landed to me. But there was, I think there was one EVP where I was like. Or, or they heard they heard a lady go. Hey. They heard it, yeah. They heard a woman's voice coming from the basement. That yeah. sounded like like a post production, like added that voice yeah. in. Yeah. That... Or, or they were near they were near an exterior wall of the house, and it could have could been be a neighbor, outside, yeah. like calling for their dog to where it's so faint. Yeah. And so you're like, yeah. And and that's that's the stuff that fascinates me. Is is you make fun of me. <laughs> for my, my interest in paranormal stuff, but that's what it is. It's an interest. Sure. And I'm not, I'm not a blind, like, that's, that's amazing. I love it. It's real. Right. I, I, I go, mm, mm, ooh, <laughs> mm, no. Mm -mm. It's a roller coaster of feelings. It's a roller coaster of emotions. But Zach Baggins, he's interesting because he's got that, he's got the top hat and everything. <laughs> And there's something, there's something about him where it's just like, what? Now, whenever I see him, I just picture that Zoltar machine. Leave the Zoltar machine. Completely out tainted him forever for yeah. me. But uh, I would recommend Demon House. If you're a fan of like ghost investigation stuff, it's fine, yeah. I guess. But if you're looking for an interesting story, there's not a whole lot there. I think there's enough fans of the TV show that the film will do just fine. Come for you. <laughs> There was a face. It doesn't want me, it wants you. We should talk about the poster briefly before we wrap up. The the highly original poster. I know we posted that famous tweet now. That the that the movie Twitter account liked. They liked our, our making fun of their unoriginal poster, apparently. You think that's Zach Baggins himself running that account? Mm -mm. Oh. Because remember, demons can transmit through electronic devices. <laughs> He doesn't want to get possessed through Twitter. There's a movie. Why haven't they made that, that yet? My Twitter account is haunted. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great title. <laughs> what's, a, what's a Twitter pun that could be the title of a movie about a ghost in Twitter? Uh, 140 characters on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess now it's 280 characters right now. They ruined it. Oh, lightning fast VCR repair. This is Mike, how can I help you? Sweet Mama Cass, we'll be right there! <laughs> Mr. Plinkett put a ham sandwich in his VCR and he needs it repaired. <laughs> Come on, Jay! All right, let's go! Back to work! No, you go that way. Oh, not under the table, there's no way out. <laughs>